Coach, you said something yesterday that reminded me of my, my days covering Bill Cowher. He used to say, a win is a win. And uh, he was referring to the fact that sometimes it's beautiful, sometimes you're just clawing your way to get there. Do fans realize how difficult it is to win in this league? Well, I, I was just saying on, a, on, another, on another media thing that I do how it, wins are so hard that whether it's beautiful, whether it's as good as you can do it, whether it's ugly or whether it's lucky, don't apologize for winning in the NFL, especially on the road, because it's, it's hard to do. And we'll take them however we can get them. Uh, I think that was a, a pretty good one. Of course, after you look at the tape, there's always stuff that you say, we should have done this, we could have done this better. But uh, we're going to take it. We seem to, to keep learning week by week more about Jameis Winston. And he's how many, 17, 18 games into this thing now. Uh, what did he show you Sunday after a, a particularly slow start for him that he was uh, that admitted to? Yeah, well, he showed me the same stuff that he always does is that, you know, with Jameis, you got to just stick with it. I mean, he's going to go through some spurts where he where he doesn't do it exactly like we would like him to but he's going to make up for it somewhere else in the game. He's, he's going to make some plays that you don't expect. You know, I know I have a tendency as a coach to want everything to go the way I think it should go, but football doesn't go that way. Uh, these players are the best players in the world, and sometimes, sometimes they, they miss plays that I think are, are routine, but then they make some plays that are just going, wow, how did that guy do that? And uh, Jameis did a lot of that yesterday. And things seem to settle down a little bit offensively. I say settle down, but you guys picked up the pace on the, using the no huddle more. And I asked the guys about it after the game. They all seem to enjoy it. <laughs> they all seem to enjoy that pace. Do they get in your ear about that? Come on, Coach. Uh, a little bit, a little bit. And I like the no huddle, too. I mean, I'm not fighting them on that. It's just uh, actually the no huddle was probably easier for us to communicate yesterday than when we did huddle. It seemed like we had more problems getting our personnel groups in there when we were in when we're when we're in no huddle. We're trying not to change personnel groups because then you got to wait for the defense to sub. So we had a little little problem with that. The, the crowd noise. I, I mentioned this last week, but the crowd noise you can never duplicate it in practice or in right. preseason. So the first time you get seventy thousand, it just takes a little while to get it adjusted. And then the other thing is, we were seemed like we were backed up the whole game. And I'm always a little bit leery uh, of, of going no huddle when we're backed up, and it seemed like we were always backed up. It's a, little, it's a little easier after we say you're out maybe past the 30 or so. But, uh, you know, we, we, after they took the lead on us 10-3, to 3, we started in no huddle. We went away from it. And then when they took the lead 10-3, to 3, we just said we got to get back to it. And uh, we did a good job with it from there on out. And credit to the Falcons, second year in a row in that building. It comes down to a possession of, of theirs on offense. Your defense makes a play to finish the game. How fitting was that to see that uh, awesome. Gerald McCoy get that hand up yesterday? Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, you know, we were able to, we got the ball back. We got the ball back with uh, just under five minutes to go. We made them use all their timeouts. We got a couple first downs. So they got it back. I think it was a minute 40 something, no timeouts. They hit that first pass down the middle, got like a 15 yard gain. But after that, the defense went to work. Uh, I think we had two blocked balls by Gerald right there. A lot of times you'll see games end, a ball will get tipped and it'll end in an interception. And both times that ball was tipped, I was going, pick it, pick it. Uh, but you know, we had some good coverage in there. We got good pressure all day. Gerald McCoy played fantastic the whole game. And, uh, you know, that he and Quan Alexander were our big playmakers on defense yesterday. It was great to see them go out there and close it out. I hate to pick on something negative of it from above, but Quan and Gerald were part of a, a personal foul uh, yeah. during the game. It's outside of the building. We can say, listen, this is a little ridiculous. Yeah. However, they were in that position. What are your thoughts on the situation? Yeah, so the thing on that rule, uh, you know, there's certain rules that you don't like, but it doesn't matter if you like them or not. That's the rule. And what the rule is, is when a player celebrates, you can't have a, a planned out celebration with another player. And that wasn't planned out. What happened is Gerald got a sack and he was doing his little sack dance thing. And Quan, just in the moment, just kind of started imitating him. And <laughs> right when I saw it, I said, ah, they're going to call that. And all the defensive coaches were on the phone going, that wasn't planned, that wasn't planned. I go, oh, yeah, I know it wasn't planned, but the refs don't know that. So, uh, you know, I saw, I think it got called last night in the Sunday night game too. So, you know, we'll, we'll have a little talk about it when the players come back. It's unfortunate because it could have it could have been huge. I mean, we did a lot better on penalties last night. I think it was six for 48 yards. 
but we still had a couple of foolish penalties and that wasn't a malicious penalty. I mean, that wasn't right. malicious. It was, uh, but that's just one where I got to do a better job of making sure our guys know the rules. And finally, I know <clears throat> midweek is when we discuss injuries in, in the NFL, but I know fans are concerned about uh, the well-being of Jacquees Smith. It seemed that guys adjusted nicely yesterday. Do you see roles having to change perhaps uh, if there's a temporary uh, time without uh, Jack or even longer? Well, absolutely. When when you lose a player to injury, especially a, a player that uh, plays a key role, you you have to adjust. I mean, that's that's the NFL. When you uh, you only have 46 guys up on game day, 46 active players on your game day roster, and Jacquees went went down with a non-contact injury in the in the first quarter. Uh, yeah, roles have to change just like that on the spot. It, it it always affects your special teams the most, but because Jacquees is a uh, a key member of our pass rush crew. Uh, it, it affected Clinton McDonald had to play more inside. Robert Ayers probably had to play a little bit more outside. And, uh, you know, just the, the one of the few negatives of the NFL is the injury factor. And uh, for us to lose Jacques yesterday uh, was, was just a heartbreaker.